Good afternoon, and I want to welcome you to another um, edition of the uh, Trumpet Series Bible Study Broadcast. This is your host, Brother Nick Bailey, coming to you live from the um, United Baptist Church Auditorium on this Wednesday, December the 8th, 2021. Uh, thank you for tuning in today. Sing a song. I need your prayers this afternoon. This is a very tough song to sing, so just pray that I don't uh, botch it terribly. Amen. What is that uh, saying that we use when we're not confident in uh, our singing? Don't listen to the way I sing it, but listen to the words. So, uh, amen. Hope it's a blessing to you today. He won't have suffer like he once did now a royal crown has replaced the thorns on his head and I won't see a bruised and battered face when his face I finally see He won't ever have to die again. Once was enough for me. Once was enough for me to see how much he loved me. One lonely trip was all. It took up Calvary when Jesus said it is finished, he made it all eternity. He won't ever have to die again. Once was enough for me. I remember well the time when I once was lost and I still recall those wasted years what they cost I don't have to look back very far the scars they've left I can plainly see I won't ever live that way again. Once was enough for me. Once was enough for me to see how much he loved me. One lonely trip was all it took of Calvary when Jesus said it is finished he meant for all eternity he won't ever have to die again once was enough for me when Jesus said it is finished he meant for all eternity he won't ever have to die again once was enough
Amen. How many of you today are thankful that once was enough for you? Amen. So we're going to talk about that today on uh, another episode of the Trumpet Series Bible Study Broadcast. I want to thank you for tuning in on this Wednesday again, Wednesday, December the 8th, as we creep ever so closer to the Christmas holiday. Christmas season is in full force. And boy, I can just tell the difference in traffic uh, out on the roads from one day to another. Just how that, uh, amen, it's just getting busier and busier and hustle and bustle. And uh, amen, people going absolutely crazy. So, um, amen, hallelujah. Isn't it wonderful? I promise I'm trying not to be a Scrooge. But the Lord's good to us, and thank God for Jesus. And as we're, we've been studying the death of His darling Son, as it is revealed to us here in Romans chapter number 5. So, um, amen. It is prayer meeting night. It being Wednesday, not only does it mean that today is hump day, but this is prayer meeting night at our local churches. So I want to encourage everybody to make a special effort to go out and support Wednesday night prayer meeting uh, services at the local church where you attend. And if you don't have a home church, I would ask you to consider coming out to prayer meeting services that will occur tonight at United Baptist Church here in Greenville, Tennessee. Our United for Christ Youth program will be occurring downstairs at 7 o'clock p.m. as we do have classes for all ages, as we're doing our best here at United Baptist Church to reach another generation for Jesus Christ. We're also providing van transportation for those kids whose parents are not able to bring their kids to church. So, if you have a child who would like to come to church who lives either in or close to the city limits uh, here in Greenville, give me a call at, uh, again, area code 423-863-1830, and we'll make sure your kids are picked up on one of our church vans. Then, while the United for Christ Youth program is meeting downstairs. We're also offering an upstairs Bible study uh, for our uh, adults as well, as we're currently right in the middle of a study of the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah's prophecy is uh, tonight. We'll be continuing chapter number 12 in our study of this wonderful book in the Scriptures. Come out and be a part of our Wednesday night prayer meeting, Bible study and United for Christ Youth Services here at United Baptist Church. And I'm sure you'll find them to be a blessing to yourself as well as to your family. I do want to give a quick uh, shout out today to the ARC Ministries, the ARC Thrift Store. Um, again, if you've never had a chance to uh, go by the ARC, uh, I would encourage you to do so. Uh, the ARC Thrift Store, 313 East Bernard Avenue here in Greenville. My wife, uh, she pretty much runs the store for me. And I appreciate her faithfulness and dedication to that. So go by to the Ark Thrift Store and find something that, uh, uh, amen, that um, you can take home with you. Just by way of announcements, I do want to continue to remind you about the Calls Winter Youth Conference that is scheduled for December 27th to the 30th at the Venture of Faith Camp located in Lake Park, Georgia. Brother Greg Lentz, again, longtime director of the Tent Crusades, uh, the music, he, he directs the musics, for uh, Dr. Ralph Sexton Jr.'s uh, Tent Crusades. He's also in charge of Hearts with Hand Ministries located in Asheville, North Carolina. And um, for several years now, uh, Brother Greg Lentz has, um, has uh, had this, the Calls Ministry as he tries to reach another generation of young people for Jesus Christ. So again, that is the Calls Winter Youth Conference that's scheduled December the 27th to the 30th at the Venture of Faith Camp, once again located in Lake Park, Georgia. Brother Greg Lentz, Dr. Joe Arthur, Dr. Chris Hayslip, and Evangelist John Burt will be preaching those services. Then also, don't forget the first ever Voice of Hope Crusade that's going to take place on Saturday, uh, January the 29th, 5 o'clock p.m. at the Convention Center located in uh, Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Brother D.R. Harrison, the entire Voice of Hope team will be hosting that event. Again, that's the first ever Voice of Hope crusade. Saturday, 20, uh, January 29th, 5 o'clock p.m. at the Convention Center located in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. 
Pastor Greg Locke, Dr. Kevin Jessup, uh, and Brother D.R. Harrison will be doing the preaching. Uh, then the Browders, the Newlands of the day, and the Wilmington Celebration Choir will be there as well to provide the music. So remember this uh, first ever Voice of Hope uh, crusade, Gatlinburg Convention Center in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Uh, again, Saturday, January 29th, 5 o'clock p.m. But then I especially want to remind you about what's going on this upcoming Saturday night. Uh, amen, excuse me, Friday night. Friday night, December the 10th at the Preaching Christ Church uh, in Kingsport, Tennessee, where the Browders, the Browder family, uh, renowned Southern Gospel group, they will be having their Christmas tour concert again, 7 o'clock p.m. That's at the Preaching Christ Church, Kingsport, Tennessee, Friday night, December the 10th, 7 o'clock p.m. We're going to do our best to take a church van, uh, a van load of people up to Kingsport and attend that concert. Just by way of prayer request, this afternoon, I want to continue to encourage you to remember my dear friend, Brother Roger Stockton, longtime pastor of Greystone Free Will Baptist Church here in Greene County. Remember him as he's still in the hospital. Continue to remember Miss Elizabeth Ward suffering the loss of her husband. Uh, continue to remember Anthony Thompson, as uh, uh, my understanding is he is beginning to make some improvement. Harold and Nancy Chapman, Harold's in the hospital right now. Sam Hardy that had successful brain surgery to remove a, a malignant tumor in his brain. Continue to remember Sam Hardy in prayer. Remember Brother Sam and Miss Barbie Stillner and a special prayer request today. Uh, a lady by the name of Amy Blackwell wanted me to request prayer for her and her family. So let's pray and then we'll get right into today's Bible study. Father in heaven, I love you. God, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you, Lord, for your blessings you bestowed upon us. Uh, Lord, thank you for another day that you've made, God. Help us to rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us come to the Lord's house, Father. So, God, I pray that you'd use your word to, today uh, to impart uh, help and healing and wisdom uh, to those who uh, so graciously choose to tune in, uh, whether they be watching or listening to today's broadcast. Lord, I pray that you'd give us uh, eyes to see, ears to hear, a mouth to speak, a heart to understand thy truth. I pray your word would not return unto us void, God, but it'd get the job done, fall on good ground, bear fruit in the hearts of those who receive it, God. Lord, I pray, Father, that we'd allow your word to be a lamp in our feet and a light in our path. We'd hide your word in our hearts that we might not sin against thee. Honor your word, exalt your son by way of your humble servant. God, if there might be one today that's viewing or listening to the broadcast and they're lost, I pray that you might save them before it's too late. We'll praise you for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, just give me one moment as I do need to adjust the lights. Forgot to turn the stage lights on, which I'm sure has caused the picture to be just a little bit uh, dim, the video. So give me just a moment while I make that adjustment to the lighting system here in our church auditorium. Amen. So there we go. <clears throat> I'll tell you, just so much to remember, and it's so easy to forget things that, uh, that are necessary. Well, I flipped the wrong switch. You guys are just going to have to overlook me. Again, if it's not one thing, it's another. So there we go. Now we've got the proper lighting. Okay, let's uh, get right into the study of the, the Word of God today as we, con we continue to, um, to study one of the greatest of all chapters in the entire uh, book of Romans as well as the Word of God. And that's Romans chapter number 5 where we considered yesterday studying verse number 8. Uh, but God commendeth His love towards us and that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. Aren't you thankful today for Romans chapter number 5 verse 8? This verse falls within the confines of a larger section of Scripture that begins in chapter number 5, verse 1, and continues on down through verse number 11 of the same chapter where the Apostle Paul provides us with what I like to refer to as the benefits, the blessings, and the byproducts of our justification. As opposed to verses 12 through 21 of Romans chapter number 5 where the Word of God speaks regarding the basis and the bedrock of our newfound standing, we have as justified born-again believers in Jesus Christ. 
But as far as the blessings of justification are concerned, so far we've looked at the first five of these, what I believe to be a total of seven benefits of justification that are recorded in the first 11 verses of Romans chapter 5. We started out talking about the fact that we who are justified, we have been able to make peace with God. Amen. We're going to talk more about that here this afternoon. Not only that, but we've also been given access into the grace wherein we now stand. Amen. I'm thankful for the newfound access that I have uh, because of my standing as a child of God. And I have access into the very presence of God to, uh, to uh, glean from the riches of His eternal grace uh, that are available to me as one of His children. But not only that, we also rejoice in the hope of His glory. Uh, one of these days I'm going to be glorified and I have that hope and that confidence. And then we examine the spiritual growth process that occurs in the life of every, say, born-again uh, Christian who has been made righteous or declared righteous. Again, that process, uh, tribulation is working patience. Patience uh, produces experience, and experience uh, provides us with an expectation or of a hope that we have. Amen. Uh, that one day we will be righteous and we'll be like the Lord. But then over the last couple of days, we've been talking about the love of God that's been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost that's been given unto us, that pouring into, that gushing out, just like a geyser or a fountain, uh, amen, or a volcanic eruption that's just uh, uh, flowing out of and flowing through and flowing into our hearts by the Holy Spirit of God that was imparted unto us on the day of our new birth. But today, I want us to consider at least the sixth and maybe even the seventh, hopefully, blessing and benefit of our justification. We're in Romans chapter 5, beginning in verse number 9, on down through verse 11, the Bible says this, Much more than being now justified by His blood. I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus. We shall be saved from, the wrath, or from wrath through Him. For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, so much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have now received the atonement. So let's get right into this today. First of all, let's notice a salvation. Verse number 9 and 10, much more then, being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him, for if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. Here's the fifth blessing and benefit of our justification. I'd like to uh, identify it as being a salvation or a deliverance. Uh, amen. The fact that we, uh, uh, now that we are justified, we have been declared righteous uh, in God's sight. Uh, we shall be saved from wrath. Uh, that's verse number 9. But then in verse number 10, we see this word saved being used over and over again. The Bible alludes to this same principle of salvation when it talks about how that we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, even though we were at that time enemies of His. Thank God for the ministry of reconciliation. Then finally, at the end of verse 10, Paul mentions how that we who have been justified will also be saved through His life. We're saved from wrath. We're reconciled by His death, but then we're also saved through His life. So when you put all three of these truths together, again, the newfound state of just, uh, that we have access to as justified born-again believers in Christ Jesus, we've been saved from wrath, we've re been reconciled by the death of His Son, and we've been saved by the life of Jesus, the resurrecting power of Jesus Christ, and it all happens by way of and because we have been justified and declared righteous uh, in the sight of a holy God. Now here when Paul uses the word salvation, I think he has in mind a deliverance from some things that occur in our lives uh, now that we have been justified. So let me ask you, friend, today, how many of you believe that because we've been justified and declared righteous by holy God, we have been delivered from some things. In other words, we who are justified, 
we've been made free from some things that we were pre previously bound by and chained to. Primarily speaking, when uh, the, the gavel fell in the, the high court of heaven and the verdict of not guilty was read and case dismissed uh, was uh, authority, authoritatively pronounced uh, to us, uh, you and I who are saved were immediately and instantly delivered and set free from the penalty of sin. Hallelujah, glory to God, which the Bible refers to in Romans chapter 6, verse 23 uh, as being death. For the wages of sin, uh, the verdict, uh, uh, amen, ex uh, excuse me, the verdict is issued, the sentence, the sentence that is pronounced uh, is death. For the wages of sin is death. Uh, amen. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. As a side note, we'll see in tomorrow's episode how that Paul continues to elaborate on this thought in Romans chapter 5 verse 12 where the Bible says, Wherefore, uh, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death hath passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. And in light of that truth, it is so very important for we who have been justified and declared righteous in the sight of a holy God, that we know we've been delivered, and we know that we have been set free from the penalty, uh, amen, uh, and the sentence of, uh, of sin, which is eternal death and separation from God, also known and referred to in the New Testament as condemnation. Romans 8, 1 and 2, the Apostle Paul writes, There is therefore now no condemnation, to them which are in Christ Jesus. Aren't you thankful for that? No more condemnation. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Aren't we thankful here this afternoon for the fact that the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. And because of that, because we've been made free, Amen. There is now no more condemnation. We don't have to worry about the wrath of God falling down and over our lives because of our sin. Uh, amen. This goes right along with the statement Paul makes here in verse number 9 of our text. He writes at the end of the verse that we who are justified, uh, because there is now no more condemnation, we who are justified shall be saved from wrath. Uh, through him, the wrath of God that was pronounced upon uh, as a form of judgment uh, and punishment on this world uh, in over man's sin. We don't have to worry about that. Why? Because we've been delivered. We've been made free from the condemnation that once uh, uh, stood over us, uh, hovered over our heads because of our sin. When Paul uses the word wrath here in this verse, I believe he has in mind the same idea as he does in Romans 8.1 when the word condemnation is used. In other words, now that we, we have been justified, and since we've been made righteous, or declared righteous, excuse me, we who are saved have been delivered and set free from the future wrath that is uh, reserved and is uh, held back and will one day fall down on the people of this world because of man's sin. Amen. And because of that, and since we've been justified and declared righteous in the sight of a holy God, there is now no condemnation reserved uh, and held against our lives. I'm thankful that because I'm saved, I'm not a child of wrath, but to salvation and deliverance. Because I've been made free, I've been justified, and I have been declared righteous, and now there is now no condemnation, no wrath. The wrath of God will not fall on my life as a form of punishment. And uh, amen, I, I cannot be sentenced to wrath. I'm not a child that is reserved to wrath or condemnation because I have been made free. I've been declared uh, innocent, not guilty, and my case has been dismissed. Uh, no sentence of punishment can be ordered or issued against my life. Now, if I'd been guilty found guilty by heaven's high court, that would, have been a, that would have been an entirely different story. Amen. But since that verdict of not guilty has been reached, amen, no sentence of death, the, the wrath and the condemnation 
of God that's held against sinners because of their sin cannot be ordered or issued, and especially it cannot be carried out against my life. Uh, amen. Sad to say, the sentence that, that is issued by the high court of heaven regarding those sinners who've been found out to be guilty before God, it is a sentence of death. The death penalty, a spiritual death pen penalty, has been issued against all sinners who were found guilty in the, uh, by heaven's high court. Uh, you see, friend, before we got saved, and before you and I were justified, we were in danger of falling in under a death sentence. And a warrant was getting ready to be issued. And our lives were on the verge of falling in under the spiritual death penalty, and it seemed as if there would be no way out of our despair. But thank God at the very last moment, right before the gavel fell and the verdict of guilty was, was reached and the sentence of death was issued against us, my defense attorney Jesus stepped in, hallelujah, praise His high and holy name. Jesus pleaded my case. He served as a mediator between myself and the, he the high court of heaven. And when it was all said and done, a truce was made. Uh, a settlement was reached between myself, uh, between myself and my accusers. And hallelujah, glory to His name, I was able to escape the death penalty. And now I can confidently, boldly uh, say that I have been set free. I've been delivered. I've been saved from wrath uh, that was to come. And there is now no condemnation set forth against my life because I've been found innocent and declared not guilty because of my association with God's Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who serves as my advocate, my mediator, and my intercessor. Now there's a satisfaction, verse number 10, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son. And this here is the seventh and final blessing and benefit of our salvation. There's satisfaction to be found. For if when we were enemies... With God, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son. Here Paul returns to a topic he previously discussed in the very first verse of the chapter, that is the doctrine of reconciliation. And that goes right back to the very first benefit and blessing of justification. We've already discussed at length how that we who are justified, we have been able to make peace between ourselves and a holy God. In other words, that white flag of surrender has been waved. The, an agreement has been signed. A truce has been made. And those who were at odds have been brought together, have been reconciled. Uh, the, the middle wall of petition has been broken down. down. That enemy, enmity, excuse me, has been erased. Um, those variances that stood between ourselves and uh, God, who at that time, before we were saved and when we were lost, uh, He was an enemy of ours. We were on the wrong side of the battle. Uh, amen. Uh, but there has been a truce. We've been brought together by the one who was willing to serve as a mediator between the two parties. I'm thankful for my heavenly mediator. I'm thankful that I have an advocate in Jesus Christ the righteous. 1 Timothy 2, 5, there is one God and there is one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. He is the man, Christ Jesus. Romans 8, 34, who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who is it that has the right to lay charges, uh, any charges against those who have been justified, those who have been uh, declared innocent, those uh, of whom, uh, uh, who fallen under the verdict of not guilty that's been reached. Amen. When God authoritatively declared not guilty, what sins are you talking about? Now nobody, not even uh, the accuser uh, of the brethren, not, only, not even the prosecution that has all kinds of evidence to present before the... Uh, the high court of heaven, not even our uh, prose the prosecuting attorney, Satan himself, has any right to condemn us because we have been justified. Hebrews 7, verse number 25, Paul wrote this, Wherefore, 
He is able also to save them to the uttermost that come to, unto God by Him, seeing He ever liveth to make intercession for them. Let me read that again. Wherefore, He is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by Him, seeing He, Jesus, uh, our mediator, our intercessor, our advocate, He ever lives to make intercession for them. So in our case... The reason why we've been saved, the reason why we've been set free, and the reason why we've been delivered from the sentence that was issued regarding our case, which is the death penalty, amen, it, it, the reason that, that, uh, that this has occurred is because a settlement has been reached between the defense and uh, the prosecuting attorneys. And as far as the prosecution is concerned, we have to look no further than the, the accuser of the brethren the devil himself to know that he is the one who has brought up the charges that stand against us and in between us and a holy God. Yet praise the Lord for the fact that we have a defense attorney named Jesus who is pleading our case and is interceding and serving as a mediator in between us and on our behalf. And because of the counter evidence, I'm thankful, amen, that although the devil has some charges... Uh, that he brought up against us. Jesus has uh, some counter evidence that he presented that, that overrule and override all of the charges and the evidence that the devil had stacked against us and that stood between us, ourselves, and a holy God. And because of all that counter evidence that Jesus had to refute all the charges and the evidence that Satan had uh, to make accusations against us, amen, uh, that old devil, that old scoundrel, that old accuser of the brethren, he had no other choice but to drop the charges. Amen. The counter evidence won out. And the shed blood and the righteousness of God's Son that was offered up as a counter evidence on our behalf overread and overruled the charges. Aren't you thankful uh, that the grace of God, the blood of Jesus, the righteousness of Christ always has been and always will be greater than our sin. And as a result, a settlement was reached. A re reconciliation took place. And we sinners who were declared not guilty by heaven's high court were able to escape the sentence of death that was in danger of being carried out against our lives. By the way, friend, if you're not saved, you are currently in danger of facing a spiritual death penalty. Uh, amen. And, and all, all that stands between you and... Uh, an eternal electric chair in hell where you're going to burn and you're going to fry forever in the flames of that hell hellish place. Amen. The only thing that stands in between you, uh, amen, and, 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 and uh, be, uh, facing the death penalty uh, is waiting on a verdict. Uh, whether or not uh, you hear uh, that verdict that's issued when you stand before God one day as either being guilty or not guilty. Now there's an invigoration, and, and uh, the Bible says here in verse number 10, much more, and I just love those two words. You ought to underline those two words, much more. Being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. Don't you just love that? Let me read it one more time. Much more, verse number 10, Romans chapter 5, being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. Here we find that this blessing and benefit of our justification does not stop or end with a mere settlement that was reached between ourselves and those of whom we were at odds with. And I don't know about anybody else, but to me that in itself seems like it ought to be enough just to know that I've escaped an impending sentence of death and a punishment of wrath and condemnation that was in danger of falling down upon my life because of my guilt and as a result of my sin, knowing that because I have been justified and declared righteous, I've avoided my sentence and I don't have to face the death penalty that would have been pronounced and enforced against my life if I had been guilty. And friend, again, I want to say it. If you have not been justified, if you have not been declared righteous, uh, amen, if a, if a verdict has been not reached in your case, you are in danger of facing the spiritual death pen penalty that will one day be pronounced and enforced against your life if you are found guilty. 
And God help that any sinner would fall in under the death penalty uh, and have the death penalty. I'm not talking about an eternal, a, a temporary penalty, but an eternal punishment that you're going to suffer uh, burning and frying forever in the flames and fires of that hellish place. But if that in itself isn't enough, God has given me more. And He's done so much more for me than to just save, deliver, and make me free from the condemnation and the guilt of my sins. But also He's given me a brand new life. Aren't you thankful? Uh, for a brand new life and a, and a purpose-filled future with all kinds of power, prospects, and hope for my future. And it kind of reminds me of what Jesus Himself said in John chapter number 8, verse 36, where He told that Pharisee crowd, Jesus said, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I'm thankful that I have an eternal and an everlasting freedom where I'm going to uh, eternally abide in a state of freedom. Uh, amen. Never-ending freedom. Hallelujah. Thank God for that. How about John 10, verse number 10, where the Lord said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Aren't you thankful for the fact that when God does something, He doesn't just do the simple and the basic things that are expected or required out of Him, amen, in order to fix or to reverse a situation. But instead, He does even more. He does more than, than enough than what He should do. How many of you believe today that Jesus is more than enough? He does more than what He should do, what He ought to do, and what He needed to do. For us and on our behalf, Jesus doesn't owe you a dime. Amen. If He let me starve to death, if He let me suffer by some terrible, incurable disease, uh, I'd still have to thank, say thank you, Lord, for what you've already done. Amen. He doesn't owe me anything because He's already give me, given me the best that I could ever have or possess by giving me eternal salvation by way of His Son. But... He's still done more for me. He's given me more than what I deserve. He is a God of abundance. He's a God of excess. Uh, as Paul wrote in Ephesians 3.20, He is a God that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. He's done even more and more than enough than what we could ever have expected Him to do for us and on our behalf, and if anybody were to ask you today, how's, how, 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 how has God treated you? Uh, amen. You'd have to say, well, He's done more for me than what I deserve, and what He should have done, and what He ought to have done. And because He's done more than enough for us, we ought to be willing to do more than enough for Him as well. I'm talking about being willing to go the extra mile. Uh, to, I'm talking about going over and beyond the call of duty. On behalf of our Savior, just as He's been willing to do the same for us. What is it that God could I ever ask you to do that's unreasonable? Is there any, any unreasonable expectation? Could, all, could God ever expect you to do more than what He should expect you to do? Could God ever require more out of your life, amen, than what He ought to require or expect out of you? No, my friend, I'm telling you, if He asks you, ask you to give it all, to do it all for Him. Uh, amen. It's all according to your reasonable service. Hallelujah. Praise His name. Now there's an assertion, and this is where we come, excuse me, I think I said it earlier, but this is where we come uh, to the last benefit and blessing that uh, we have as a result and a byproduct of our justification. The fact that we have been declared righteous by heaven's uh, high court. Here in verse number 11, the Bible says, And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have now received the atonement. Here in this verse, the word joy is the key word. And I believe it helps us to be able to understand the thought that Paul's trying to convey and get across to us. And here this word joy means to be able to boast about, boast in or brag about or to remain confident regarding our situation. By the way, it's the same Greek word that is translated into our English word rejoice in verse 2 and glory in verse number 3 of this same chapter. But here uh, in verse number 11, the Greek word is translated into our English word joy. And once again, it simply means to boast, to brag, and to remain confident 
regarding our circumstances. So the question is, what circumstances, what situation, and what state is it that we who have been justified can remain confident regarding? Well, according to Paul, we can be confident in God through our Lord Jesus in and by whom we have now received the atonement. My goodness, what a wonderful verse of Scripture. Here the word atonement means an appeasement, a settlement, a reconciliation, or a restoration of favor that may exist between two people. Aren't you thankful today that if you're saved, if you've been justified, if you've been declared righteous by heaven's high court, uh, amen, you've been restored to favor with God. Uh, amen, there's been an atonement, there's been an appeasement. There's been a settlement, amen. An olive, olive branch uh, has been offered up on your uh, account. And your case has been forever settled. And doesn't that just go right along with what we've been talking about as it relates to the settlement, the arrangement, the agreement, and the terms and the truth that's been reached between ourselves and a holy God regarding our sin. And listen to me today, friend, because our case has been thrown out of court. Because a verdict of innocence has been reached. Because a sentence of death has been avoided. And because a settlement of appeasement. Uh, amen. And a restoration to favor has been uh, reached. Amen. Through Jesus Christ. The one who's mediated the case and been able to strike a deal. Between ourselves and the high court of heaven. We who are saved can now live with an attitude of confidence. When it comes to the permanent relationship we have uh, we, and the one that now exists between ourselves and our Heavenly Father, aren't you thankful that we don't have to be afraid? Amen. We don't, all, we don't have to be always looking over our shoulder, waiting, to, waiting for what the devil's going to bring up next, waiting for some new charge to come to light that was previously hidden. Amen, something uh, that he concocts, some kind of lie or some kind of, maybe it's something true or something that occurs in the future. Amen, from now throughout all eternity, Jesus will continue to stand before the right hand of the Father forever serving as the intercessor, the mediator, and the advocate in our case in the presence of a holy God. Hebrews 7, 24, But this man, because he continueth ever, Jesus Christ has an unchangeable priesthood, wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost, that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. For such an high priest became us, one who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for uh, the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. Hallelujah. Praise his name today. Aren't you forever thankful that when it comes to the sacrificial offering Christ made for our sins and on our behalf, once was enough for us. And because once was enough and because Christ shall forever serve as our mediator, our intercessor, and our advocate, He stands before heaven's throne pleading our case in light of the accusations that are hurled against us and the charges that are brought uh, uh, against us from day to day by the accuser of the brethren. We can be confident, we can rest assured that the verdict that was issued when we were justified shall forever stand. Our sins will never be remembered against us anymore. And we who are saved don't ever have to worry about falling in under a death sentence or falling under a p punishment of death that would have been pronounced us if we had been found guilty. Jesus dropped the charges once and for all and the case was forever uh, dismissed and it can never be brought up against us ever again. Do you know what the case is today? And friend, I conclude with this. There is absolutely no such thing as an appeals court in heaven. Amen. Aren't you thankful? You know, in our world today that sometimes when a verdict is reached... Uh, amen, not guilty is declared, yet still, uh, amen, the attorneys uh, can go to a court of appeals in order to reverse uh, the verdict. You don't have to worry about the verdict being reversed, friend. The verdict that was issued 
when the gavel fell in the high court of heaven and you were declared innocent, not guilty, just uh, as if you'd never sinned, case dismissed, you don't ever have to worry about the verdict being reversed. You don't ever have to worry about the old devil, the accuser of the, the, the brethren, the prosecuting attorney in your case. You don't have to, ever have to worry about him going over God's head and going to a, a higher court, a court of appeals, to try to reverse your verdict and issue a sentence uh, of death against your life in spite of what God pronounced. That's right. Amen. There'll never be a mistrial. Hallelujah, praise His name. You'll never have your case brought up, whether it be uh, based on uh, past charges, uh, present charges, or even future evidence that may arise. Uh, amen. The de Hey, listen, I'm telling you, once that verdict of justification has been issued, it's case dismissed, it's over. Amen. Why? Because Jesus is there in heaven pleading your case as your mediator, as your advocate, and as your intercessor. Once that verdict of not guilty has been read, and once your case has been thrown out of heaven's court, you don't ever have to worry about the devil bringing your case up ever again, because once was enough, and because once was enough, there is simply no need for a court of appeals when it comes to the high court of heaven. One thing about it, friend, the devil will never go, ahead, go, go over and above God's head because God is the supreme court. Amen. Uh, he is, he's the judge, he's the jury, and he's the executioner. And once he has reached a verdict, and once he has issued a sentence, it's over, uh, it's under the blood, uh, amen, it's case dismissed, and I am as good as if I'm already standing uh, in, uh, seated, excuse me, seated together with Christ in heavenly places because my case has been dismissed and my verdict has been issued. And I have confidence, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heavenly Father, I love you. I've done my best today to share these truths on another episode of the Trumpet Series broadcast. And Lord, I pray that these benefits of justification, these blessings of the fact that we who are saved have been declared righteous. God, I'm thankful, Father, Lord, and I pray that it would be a help and a blessing to those who have so graciously tuned in, those who have so graciously chosen to watch or listen to uh, another episode uh, of this series. Lord, I pray that you would take these these uh, uh, these. Uh, these episodes, Lord, I pray that you would uh, take them and use them to be a help and a blessing. Lord, I pray as we uh, spare not and we cry aloud and we lift up our voices like a trumpet, I pray that your word would, would impart faith into our hearts and our souls, that we may grow stronger, more bold, and more confident as we access the eternal riches of God's grace that have been made available to us by our newfound standing, the fact that we have access uh, into the riches of His grace by Christ Jesus. I love you, Father, and I thank you for this day. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day. God bless.